welcome to the MBS show, episode number 284. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. I join you from beyond the grave. Ooh, spooky. Hello, man. I figure we might as well get early on the whole Halloween shtick. So, but to let you know, Beyond the Grave isn't really that special. I mean, they don't even have cable here. Oh no, how could you do all the things that you need to do without the cables? Because they upgraded, they have Hulu and oh. Netflix. Yes. But they don't have HBO Direct, so I guess it's a mixed bag. <laughs> uh, I guess. But any who also joining us today is Starstream. Hello everybody, how are you doing? <laughs> fine, fine. And how about you? The same. The same. Alrighty then, alrighty then. So, anywho, um, Will, it's been a while since you last came on, and welcome back, man. Like, it's been a while. Yeah, mostly because every single time it's like, oh yeah, he's doing one this time. Okay, yeah, be sure to be up on time for that. <laughs> well, you were on on time last week, but I kind of derp and mess up the schedule because I had to go out. My bet on that one. Ah, uh, well, yeah, and then I find out who's on the show, I'm like, oh, well, I would have liked to be on that with all those cool people. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, fine, I'll just go create my own podcast <laughs> with Blackjack and nice ladies. And to be honest with that one, it was out of the whim. Like, hmm, Silver Quill is on. Let me see. Hey, Silver, you want to be on? Oh, uh, I can't. Hey, is that over still standing? Uh, okay, yeah, sure, let's go. Uh, but uh, recording... F- a kerfuffles aside, uh, we have this week to deal with. And, well, let's head into the news. And the My Little Pony movie is out. It was out yesterday on the 6th of October for North America. And it will be out next... Well, coming out this episode, it will be out in two days' time, which will be on the 12th of October. So, yes, the movie is out for the general audience who are listening to this now. And, well, with any movie... Thing that's out, we have movie scores from places like Rotten Tomato. And it seems that Rotten Tomato has given it a score of 70% and a 91% like from the general audience. Yay! Uh, well, uh, unfortunately that was true yesterday. And then I got bombed by about six top critic reviews who gave it like less than stellar views saying the thing's trash. Of course, Let's take a look at these lovely views of what these people can say. Ah, yes. Imagine eating a giant bag of Skittles and then throwing it all up in a sugar-induced nausea. And you'll have some idea what it feels like to sit through My Little Pony the movie. Okay, well, apparently uh, bright colors aren't your thing. I suggest staying away from anything in Disney-inspired. This one, uh, the animation is certainly richer than the traditional flatness of the regular series, but you have to wonder what it's being put. Okay, I can see that being a fair criticism. I mean, you know, they're saying the animation's good, but, you know, you gotta wonder about, you know, story and whatnot. Okay, fine. Yeah, that, that, that could be a good criticism. However, attention the emoji movie. Your status as the worst animated feature of the year might be in jeopardy when My Little Pony the movie trots into theaters this weekend. If, um, you know what? Fine. Um, prep sweetie bot. That's not a word! Lady. <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, you're going to compare the Emoji Movie, one of the most soulless, corporate-created abominations of cinema, which is as cookie-cutter and as bland as any film has any right to be, that is made soullessly for the sole purpose of being nothing more than a corporate tie-in to promote a bunch of phone applications, and at the same time having not an ounce of character or charm behind it. North and you story. want to compare, and you want to compare that to a movie which has had a lot of love put into it. Really, I just think somebody here doesn't like kids' movies. Which, when I look at this, oh, what is it? It's either Michael or Michelle Restefan. Uh, they don't seem to like anything that's children's animation because they seem to be given any movies that are along those lines, such as oh, Brave. They gave a forty <laughs> percent. Wow. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Okay, guess what they gave Wreck-It Ralph. Okay, uh, I like Wreck-It Ralph. I put it on a high eight. Two out of five stars. The f- <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, this this critic just doesn't like anything that's bright and cheerful. In fact, actually, they seem to only like stuff because it doesn't fit into their cynical bias. 
quite a shame. Well, either way, there are some reviews on here that do have legitimate criticisms, and that's true. I myself have not seen the movie. Actually, after this show is done, I will be going to go see it with the Minnesota Brony Group. Yay! Aw, mm-hmm. that's nice. And then uh, probably eat beforehand because AMC Theaters charges up the wazoo. <laughs> Seriously, seven and a half dollars for a small bucket of popcorn. That is ridiculous. I, I, I can totally agree. I can totally agree. And yeah, whatever the rating is on the Rotten Tomatoes... That has always been the debate for a lot of movie creators. They say that it's not fair movie, like a Roger Nemeto kind of hurts the movie and whatnot. And yeah, looking at the score, it does look hurtful. But you have to ask yourself, does the score even matter? (laughs) Actually, that's true because the Lego Ninjago movie, they gave a 51%. And that did a decent $11.7 million opening and was actually still a pretty funny kids movie. So when when you really look at it, there has never been a really good consensus between critics and fans of movies. Like, okay, right now, even though the, for MLP, the movie, the tomato meter is still sitting at 57%, but the audience score is at a very high 91% with an average rating of 4.5 out of 5. And that has over 2,000, and actually it's still going up, so I'm pretty sure it's going to breach 3,000 uh, very soon, reviews. And sure, that could be from people just coming in to say they like it, but there's a lot of people that have that. I mean, uh, let's take a look at The Mountain Between Us. I mean, that just recently opened up, and that sucker, critics and uh, people are actually pretty much right on the money out. They're both halfway in the middle about liking it or not, and that one has over 7,000 reviews. So when it comes down to it, the critics don't always align with what people like. Because keep in mind, I mean, these are people that see movies constantly, and so... Sometimes they just get too jaded about it. So, I don't know. What do you think, Star? Well, my opinion, I can't wait for it. I mean, I've seen way too much spoilers, and um, the quality of the movie is great. And uh, the, I think of all one thing that attracted me the most was the soundtrack. I mean, I own the the movie or soundtrack, and uh, of all the tracks that they shown, it was actually great. Well, the thing is that the movie itself is for us, the fans of the show who has been waiting for this for a long time now. We've been asking for this movie since 2012 when season 1 was finished and we're up to season 2 by then and we have we have always been asking hey, we want a My Little Pony movie. Hey, could you give us a My Little Pony movie? And they gave us Equestria Girls. <laughs> well, I did remember that, was it a Twitter question that someone asked was like, is there anything happen, you know, like a feature movie or something? It's one of those things that they know that there's money there, but they're afraid to invest at it first. Then after, what, seven seasons of this and another eighth one coming soon and what, four to five Equestria Girl line? Yeah, they, they know they can get the money there. And, well, this movie here is for the fans. Well, I do must, uh, do want to, uh, what you call it, interrupt. It's the fact that I did hear some people who actually, re- who are bronies who watch this. They did say that the pacing was a bit rush kind of thing. And the thing, they did say that it was a bit marketed a bit too much over, like, a bit too toyetic or something. No, that's like the that. thing, that's the thing. I mean, with any MLP story, including the comics, it's gonna have a rush ending. Like, <laughs> It's, I'm expecting that by now. Like, the rush ending is part of the charm of the show. Um, believe it or not, if they give us a proper ending, like a nicely tempo flow of a storytelling uh, engine, I'll be surprised. But if you say that the ending is a bit rush, yeah, it's ponies. You, you've seen it in the series, you've seen it in Equestria Girls, you even read it in the comics, it's rush. I'm not surprised by it. I will say a, a, a review I I mean I trust more than I do trust mm-hmm. the critics of Rotten Tomatoes. Um, friendly with Brad Jones, also known as a cinema snob. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. he reviewed um, did one of his classic um, midnight reviews where he just literally w- watches movies with someone else uh, at midnight. He watched this and then too? reviews them in a the car. Yeah, he watched it. And his review is already out on YouTube. It basically, him and his friend came up with the. I mean, his friend gave it uh, more positivity, but it basically comes down to. Um, it's not his type of movie, but it's a average. Average to above average, basically, is what I got from what he was saying. It's um 
and he was right uh, from, well, at least his critique. It seems to be a lot like the original My Little Pony, the movie, where it has, one, a lot of star power behind it. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, has a lot of songs that seem to come out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, three, uh, the story seems to be at a rushed pace of the ponies lose something because of the big bad, and they have to travel all across and meet these other characters in order to find the one characters that can actually solve the problem. To which I, you know, I can see that as a you know, legitimate criticism. I'm like, okay, just from the previews I've seen and from the basic concept I can get from the movie, yeah, I can see that as a legitimate criticism. So, so really, when it comes down to it, comes down to do you like the characters? Do you like the jokes? Do you like the music? And do you like the aesthetic? So it really comes down to a personal taste sort of movie itself. But I, I reserve the right to come back and say to past me, no, Will, you were completely wrong. This movie was great. How dare you say any criticisms? I slap you. <laughs> and then I kind of wonder how I survived slapping my past self without <laughs> causing the same matter in the same place and pulling a time cop and imploding upon myself. Well, let's just see. Um, we'll... Grandfather Paradox. <laughs> uh, well, let's just say that by next week, we'll do a revisit on our thoughts and, well, uh, since I'm guessing by next week everyone's watched it and we can give our thoughts. Not in non Not detail. everyone, though. Trust me, everyone. Not everyone. Trust me, everyone. Not everyone, because uh, Twilight Genesis will not be able to watch it until next month. Uh, true that. Yeah. <laughs> well, if he's on, then that's a different story. But still, um, by next week, probably we'll have everybody here on again. And this not really fully discussing, but just give our initial impressions of did we like it did we hate it uh what did we thought was it with we'll, hey we'll, there's a there's a blu-ray of it leaked somewhere i'm sure we can show it to twilight <laughs> <laughs> oh well no no i'm not gonna talk about that one no no, I'm gonna talk about that. <laughs> no. but anyway come on we're not gonna talk about all the leaks oh the leaks. no no drip, drip, drip. no <laughs> nope. we gotta plug that leak that, that was last week's episode title uh but anywho um still on the movie train it seems that bill bear has this promotion going on where starting from October 6th to the 9th, you can get two pony plushers for the price of $35 uh, as part of an exclusive... US dollar. Yes, US dollars as an event to celebrate the movie and stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, blind black ponies and you earn $5 off for a movie ticket. Yay! Well, I don't have time to go run to build a bear and I've already bought my ticket, so oh well. Yeah, yeah. So, I think this is for the plush expert in the room. So, Star, what do you think, man? Uh, well, it's one thing I think uh, Norman kind of forget. I think it's, from the look of the poster, it's only available in the store. Stores? <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, but apparently online you can still get the promotion for 2 for 35 But for uh, regarding this mystery, I what do you call it? Mystery gift and uh, poster? I'm not too sure because... Um, I have all the ponies. Oh, <laughs> so well. I'm not gonna get it. In. I'm not, I'm not gonna get for it yet. Yeah. There's term and conditions down here that is way too small for me to read, but I'm guessing that if you really want to buy the Bill a Bear plush, you can just head down to your local Bill a Bear and get the promotion while, while offer still lasts because two for 35, that's kind of cheap, I think. How much is one Bill a Bear star? About twenty seven, twenty eight. So basically, two for thirty five. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Close to half a price, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you guys there who likes to build a bear, go ahead, go get them. Like they're fun. The last time I went to go build a bear, I mean, I still got this really beefy guy who had a bunch of body hair, and you know, kind of was like rubbing <laughs> all over me. It was very awkward. <laughs> I think you're talking about a different kind of build a bear. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but well, I did want to add in the fact that uh, well, try to get them as soon as possible because we still have Tempest and Songbird Serenade, and then it's gonna be with the usual. Uh, Build a bear system, it's gonna cycle out like a few months later or something like that, or once the stock is finished. And expect to wait like a long time. Yeah, especially for movie exclusive items, I, I doubt you'll get them again. But anywho, we're talking about the DVDs and Blu-rays. Thanks, Wills. We ain't gonna talk about that thing, but we're gonna talk about this one. And it seems that Germany's Amazon revealed DVD release for the My Little Pony movie as March 16, 2018. So yeah. A few months after the initial movie comes out, 
uh, we're gonna get a DVD. So yeah, that's cool. Hmm. I wonder uh, what will be on the DVD. Special features include subtitles and dual audio channels. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Because if this is on the German um, Amazon, I think that's about right. But <laughs> but okay. Let, let's uh, spitball ideas for what we want in our DVDs slash Blu-rays. Well, um, personally, I love commentary tracks. Um, preferably two different types: one for cast, uh, the voice actors, and a separate one for the uh, production crew. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Usually because, you know, production crew is going to talk about, you know, behind the scenes stuff and cast is going to talk about the characters and whatnot. And usually they're, they're they usually go funnier. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> Heck, I'm trying to remember what one it was, but basically like, oh, it was Futurama, I think. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. I, I forget what show it was, but I just remember that it had four of the voice actors in it and they spent the entire episode basically riffing it. <laughs> I, I'm pretty pretty sure it was um pretty sure it was Futurama now. Basically had John DiMaggio, you know, as Bender interrupting everybody else and just like, you know, being a sassy black robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, um I, I love commentary tracks. That that's what I like. Um also storyboard pieces, you know, sh- showing the process from storyboard to the line art and whatnot. But because it's a kids movie, who who knows? Um, heck, um, I don't because it's two D animated. I don't think they'll have much of a blooper reel, you know, like a fake blooper reel and whatnot. I do have to say, uh, the funniest blooper reel I've ever seen in animation was the original Shrek's blooper reel, just showing all the graphical errors of early three D rendering. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but those are made up and kind of not natural. But uh, I, I think what I like. Is the behind the scenes, the the making of those really I enjoy seeing the process of how things are made, especially um, songs like how songs are composed and whatnot. Those those I would like to see a lot. Well, wasn't it there was an episode they released the making of My Little Pony the movie? Uh, don't they don't those count? Kind of, but I'm not gonna watch it till I watch the movie first. And well, they could put it on the DVD slash Blu-ray, so that'll be a bonus. What about you? For my case is that I would love to see director's cut. Okay. I mean, of uh, everything's all the behind the scenes, all these things, those those are great. But one thing I do want to see was director's cut. Oh, director's cut. Uh, well, I, I don't know if we'll be getting a director's cut out of the gate or not, but it'll be interesting to see. I did like the... Uh... When they released, um, which one was it? The third one, the Friendship Games of Equestria Girls. They showed the storyboards slash the vocals for the original plan of that big musical number, More That's Out There. Yeah, yeah, with Twilight and Starlight. No, with Twilight and Sunset, yes. Yes, yeah, that was uh, pretty cool to see that. Yeah, and then they had to change it last minute because it didn't really fit with the whole story and whatnot. Yeah, they decided to they decided to not go with the uh, sunset wanting to go back to Equestria, which is a perfectly wasted idea. But they could revisit it any time, any other time, which does make it better. Like having its own dedicated story instead of having it shared with Twilight wanting to know more while Sunset just wondering if I want to go back or not. And eh, you know what? That's another discussion for another time. But talking about the Equestria girls. You remember that tree story you involving the magics? Well, it seems that that whole thing is called Tales of Cantalot High, now available on Netflix. And I've checked locally. I have it here on my end. And I'm guessing you have it on your end too? I wouldn't know. I don't have Netflix right now. Ah, all right then. But still, it's out there. And it seems that they're using the DVD version of said show on the Netflix. Because... The mirror magic part is saturated as heck. Hmm. Ah, saturation. Yep. Well, okay, maybe they'll fix that. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> all, all I do know is, um, I, I, I probably wouldn't have paid attention to it because all anyone wants to talk about on Netflix right now is Stranger Things coming out. Is it, um, also on Netflix, The Inhumans? Yeah, that too. And also, isn't uh, Death Note also available on Netflix? 
Oh, Death Note, that is a peach. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yep. Excuse me, while well, I call uh this light to be an absolute coward and freaking hilarious. <laughs> no comment. <Death. laughs> Sorry, I, I can't I can't reach the false set of screaming <laughs> of, of a girl that this guy hits. I'm a baritone, I have my limits. <laughs> Oh wow! Honestly, um, if we're gonna get right on track again, uh, if you haven't not watched this um, three twenty-two minute uh, episode, I say it's worth the watch. If you do have the Netflix, go there. It's kind of free. You have a subscription to Netflix, so go watch it. If not, you can just subscribe for a thirty-day trial and go watch it. So it's there for you to do so, and well, enjoy the episode because it's fun the first one deals with the girls wanting to, to do some fundraising thing to help camp ever free the second one is about movies where they're behind the scene on a production of daring do and the third one is starlight glimmer goes to the human world so yay yeah so we get to see i think probably the third one is probably the best just because we get to see sunset is a pony again and we get to see some very hilarious um all right I have magic, and I don't have hands interaction. Oh, yes, and uh, awkward Starlight being awkward. That's fun. <laughs> uh, st- st- but Starlight just runs to it like, you know, a fish out of water. Uh, not a fish out of water. Like a fish to water. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the, whole, just the whole, no, I'm fine. I got this. Flick of the hair. Gets down on all floors and goes walking. He's like, no, 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 not, not, not like that. No, no. No, 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 no. But still, it's, it's fun. It's a fun movie and I do recommend <laughs> go watch it for your edit daily bonus of pony content. But still, um, that's the news for this week. And well, um, let's go to another part of the world where you can get exclusive pony merch, which is New York Comic Con is happening now, I think. Yes. It is. It is. Yeah. I think so. Shows how much I know. And yeah, New York Comic Con happening this weekend, if I remember right. And it seems that, well, um, Wills, I, I see that you posted an image for us to look at. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you want guys follow Kevin Conroy on Twitter, he has a lovely picture of him hanging out with his good friend, Mark Hamill. And they just look like, look like the bestiest buddy bunch of all. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's where the tweet's from. That's from the Comic Con going on. Mm. Yep. I, wonder if I wonder what are the surprises and treasures we will find out from this convention going on. Talking about these treasures, um, it seems that the Funko booth will have their rainbow dash, rainbow colored figure worth about $80. One out of 600 exclusive. So go get him while you can. And also Comic X. Pose will have their exclusive covers at the New York Comic Con. And it's scientist Zakura looking into the stethoscope and looking at bacteria of the main six. You know what? Me describing this doesn't really make any sense, so let me just put it in the link in the thing below. I'm not even sure if I'm going to do this in the show notes. Maybe I would <laughs> somehow. But anyway, um, it's there. And also... Enterplay LLC will have their exclusive con badges. Price for free. Interesting. I wonder what you need to buy. <laughs> oh, with $10 purchase of 3 My Little Pony CCG trading card? Huh. Okay. That's cool. And yeah, those look really good uh, if you're a pin collector. And a lot of things. Like, do go look into the show notes. I think I'll do this show note thing. And look for the things... That you cannot get anywhere else. Oh, this is sad. <laughs> uh, but still, <laughs> uh, things are there. Go look, see if you're interested. Maybe you'll um, get some, what you call this, inspiration to go to the next one. Anywho, with that aside, let's head on to the next topic. What have we been doing with our week? So, um, Wills, you haven't been on for a while. What have you been doing, man? Well, I've started a new job and it's... um. A little demanding, but uh, definitely one I think I could get used to. Awesome. Mind sharing mm-hmm. with us what it is, or is it personal? Uh, well, it is 
uh, again, it's a temp to higher position, so I'd rather not go too much into it. No. But basically, it's office work. <laughs> it's office work for a manufacturer. I make sure that when orders come in, we get the right orders and the right blueprints out to the manufacturers out in the warehouse so they can start making it and so that shipping can uh, send it when it gets ready. Awesome. Sounds mm-hmm. like a good job. And, yeah, because they desperately need people in the office. Technically, they have enough space in there for nine people. They only had three when I arrived. Oof. Well, that's besides the point, yes. then. I, I've only worked two days, so I don't know if, like, they had a bunch of people leave. But, uh, I mean, so far, a very amicable and very hospitable uh, environment. Uh, environment. Uh, yes. Yeah. Very, very nice people. <clears throat> That's good, that's good. And besides the work... Gosh, I'm starting like, I'm I'm like Donald Trump now. They are very nice, very lovely people. Yes. <laughs> no, I know some wonderful no, people there. No, no, please don't. Silver's got that cover. You don't need to add in more. <laughs> hey, he doesn't have a monopoly on making fun of politics. <laughs> uh, but, but anywho, um, besides the work, what have what, what other things have you been doing? I've I seen that you've been playing a lot of... Um, Starbound, was it? Starbound? I haven't touched Starbound in ages. Um, what I have played is a bit of Stardew Valley again and Overwatch, but, um, mostly what I've been playing in my time off has been Baldur's Gate 2, basically running through an old school RPG, an actual RPG, one that had questions and heck, you can actually skip a good chunk of the game just by choosing something differently. I mean, gosh dang it, this game had choice. And when it means choice, it means actual choice. Not a, hey, what color of explosions in the ending <laughs> cutscene do you want to have? Oh, uh, yeah, that one. But, uh, no, I have to say, uh, what I'm really looking forward to is the Overwatch Halloween event, which actually should be active about the time this episode comes out. Uh, the 10th, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, by the time that this episode comes out, yeah, it'll be around that time. And for those of you who actually play Overwatch, you know about their... Uh, this will actually be the second time they've done a, done a Halloween event. And it seems like um, because they have timed events with which will there be timed skins and timed sprays and timed voice lines, etc., etc., etc. There's been a few leaks, because everything leaks nowadays, mm-hmm. of uh, some of the skins. And uh, McCree, the gunslinger dude, is going to be having one of Van Helsing. Reaper, the edge lord of the group, is obviously getting another spooky, scary one with another skull mask. Mm-hmm. And um, by far, uh, two of the coolest ones is Zenyatta, the peaceful monk, gets a, Ch- a Cthulhu-inspired outfit. And uh, Symmetra, the part one I, character I love, gets this awesome dragon-looking skin. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. And wow, <laughs> I, I like Symmetra's skin, but now with that costume there, like, whoo-wee, yeah. And apparently they may be doing some special event, you know, game mode with it. But other than that, um, that is what I've been doing with my week, is playing games and doing my new job and writing. Awesome, awesome. And what about you, Star? What have you been doing with your week? Uh, my week has been uh, involving a lot of just reading on tech news and stuff. Uh, part, partly just I got a bit in, into cryptocurrency. So just been looking around through the different kinds of currency and the ones that I've been mining like Ethereum, which is quite a bit unique in terms of how it's being used uh, in the everyday situation. Another thing is that I also got into... Uh, into the spoiler chat and just looking around what people's uh, comments about this movie and all these kind of things. Oh, uh, why why do you even spoil yourself, my friend? Uh, I've been spoiled since way back in April when I went to Typonicon. That what do you was think? just a, t- a trailer <laughs> thing. Hey, <laughs> you. Uh, but hey, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay. and, uh, movies out, movies out, so you can go watch it. Well, I have to wait until the 12th uh, provider if... My place here has it. Well, luckily there is one cinema, but I had to travel at least an hour away. So Don't care, ponies, go watch. That's fun. <laughs> yes, that's what I have to do. I have to pull some people and hoping there will be enough people at the cinema to watch. But then again, the 12th is not a good day because it's going to be Thursday. So as you all know, Thursday is a, work, uh, it's a working day. and yeah, Thursday it. and Friday. And Friday is like, well, in our country, it's 
it's a working day, so not fun. I do know that there will be some more people watching on the Saturday or Sunday. Well, I do hope there's another place that I could watch. So I could just go to the capital, just watch the movie. After that, then maybe Saturday, Sunday, if the state of Malaysia where I have, I could just go down there and just watch the movie again. <laughs> well, the choices are there for you to do. And well, as yep. for... Well, provided they, they have it, that is. Yeah, true, that, true, that. I, I do hope they do because it will be a shame if they didn't. Well, they are kind of terrible. Oh yeah, we did. I did forget to add on by the fact that Malaysia is the only country I think I can officially say that we do not have any advertisement for the movie. Yep. Very very sad. Yeah. <laughs> because Thailand, Thai, well, Thailand has a, like three or four merch, like movie merchandise. Like they have the what you call it, the very nice looking movie. Well, yeah. Of course, they have Thailand. The- of course, Thailand gets the good merchandise. That's where it's made. Uh, ain't in China. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Like, ain't Not all, really. I don't think so. Ain't everything made in China? If you can't I afford mean, China, you you go to Thailand. I thought China was affordable. <laughs> uh, no? But... If, you, if you want even more affordable, go Vietnam. Oh, God. Uh, but anywho... Because the currency power is so small that they have, they accept US currency. Oy, oy, oy. It's that bad. <clears throat> but in... But in that case, they have a lot of merch, and then after that, there is uh, and they also have early screening. And lucky, well, uh, because Bangkok Bronies, they have their own connection with the Hasbro Thailand, so <laughs> they even managed to interview with the CEO of Hasbro Thailand. Uh, you know what? I don't get and me, then, don't get me started on all of this because <laughs> what Malaysia's thing here is. Uh, no, uh, no, what did he say? I do no. Don't get even restarted. Yeah. I have no idea why, but they did say that for some reason they they said that they do not want to spoil the image that they just want to don't show get it even, as a kids no, movie. No, 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 stop, stop. Don't get me even started. No, <laughs> no. That 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 will be a whole other topic for another day. And my uh, sweetie boy will have to come out and do stuff. No. So anyway, uh, for me and my week, well. I've been playing a bit of video games. Uh, Killer Instinct just came out and I dabbled in it a bit more from the last week that I've talked about it. It's a pretty fun game. A really, really fun game. Uh, it's different from the Street Fighters. It's way interesting with how it's handled. And other than Killer Instinct, Payday, Overwatch, and your usual from me. What, what, else, what else do you expect? Something new? I haven't bought any new games except for the Kill Instincts. And, well, I've been trying to do new new things, but, eh, well, we'll see. Maybe next week I can talk about the movie. So, yeah, I have that looking forward to. So, yay. Uh, so, anywho, let's see. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Wills, where can the good people find you? You can find me at the farthest reaches of your mind, waiting in the corners and the recesses of your consciousness, lurking, preparing. And if you actually want to find me that doesn't involve some metaphysical nonsense, you can find me on Twitter at Willisin at Twitter, or you can find my writings for Film Fiction at Film Fiction Willisin, or you can find my artwork on DeviantArt also for Willisin. All right, nice, nice. And what about you, Star? People can find me on my DeviantArt, AngeliCoreXX, or my Twitter, which is also the same, AngeliCoreXX. So, and you will find me posting some stuff. Well, commenting on other people, pictures. Alrighty then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. And please do subscribe to our newest endeavor, the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, talking about the My Little Pony series, comics, and also movies. And besides that, we also do other things that in- tickle our fancy, which is other cartoons, other comic books, and probably a bit of video game in between. We did talk about that with Destiny and the Overwatch a bit, and who knows what else we might talk in the future. 
And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, deleted episodes, and exclusive contents. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker, Cat, and Trickatoria, Starstream, and also myself, Lag. Thank you very much for the support, guys. You have been really, really awesome. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Will Eisen. And this is Starstream. And we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing and fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya. See ya. Toodaloo, folks. Nah, somewhat ready. <laughs> nah, lah. ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I join you from beyond the grave. Well, uh, I I figure we might as well get early on the whole Halloween shtick. So, um, but to let you know, Beyond the Grave isn't really that special. I mean, they don't even have cable here. Um, Because they upgraded, they have Hulu and Netflix. But they don't have HBO Direct, so I guess it's a mixed bag. Hello, Pony. How are you doing? <laughs> the same. The same. Yeah, mostly because every single time it's like, oh, yeah, he's doing one this time. Okay, yeah. Be sure to be up on time for that. Uh-huh. Rip. Oh, well, yeah, and then I find out who's on the show, and I'm like, oh, well, I would have liked to be on that with all those cool people. Hmm. Well, fine. I'll just go create my own podcast with Blackjack and nice ladies. Uh, uh, well, uh, unfortunately, that was true yesterday. And then I got bombed by about six top critic reviews who gave it, like, less than stellar views, saying the thing's trash. Of course, let's take a look at these lovely views of what these people can say. Ah, uh, yes, imagine eating a giant bag of Skittles and then throwing it all up in a sugar-induced nausea. And you'll have some idea what it feels like to sit through My Little Pony the movie. Okay, well, apparently uh, bright colors aren't your thing. I suggest staying away from anything in Disney-inspired. This one, uh, the animation is certainly richer than the traditional flatness of the regular series, but you have to wonder what it's being put. Okay, I can see that being a fair criticism. I mean, you know, they're saying the animation's good, but, 
you know, you got to wonder about, you know, story and whatnot. Okay, fine. Yeah, that, that, that could be a good criticism. However, attention, the emoji movie. Your status as the worst animated feature of the year might be in jeopardy when My Little Pony the movie trots into theaters this weekend. If, um, you know what? Fine. Um, prep sweetie bot. Fuck you, lady. <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, you're going to compare the Emoji Movie, one of the most soulless, corporate-created abominations of cinema, which is as cookie-cutter and as bland as any film has any right to be, that is made soullessly for the sole purpose of being nothing more than a corporate tie-in to promote a bunch of phone applications, and at the same time having not any ounce of character or charm behind it. North and you story. want to compare, and you want to compare that to a movie which has had a lot of love put into it. Really, I just think somebody here doesn't like kids' movies. Which, when I look at this, oh, what is it? It's either Michael or Michelle Restefan. Uh, they don't seem to like anything that's children's animation because they seem to be given any movies that are along those lines, such as. Oh, Brave, they gave a 40%. <laughs> uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Okay, guess what they gave Wreck-It Ralph? Two out of five stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this critic just doesn't like anything that's bright and cheerful. In fact, actually, they seem to only like stuff because it doesn't fit into their cynical bias. Quite a shame. Well... Either way, there are some reviews on here that do have legitimate criticisms, and that's true. Um, I mean, I myself has not seen the movie. Actually, after this, uh, actually after this show is done, I will be going to go see it with the Minnesota Brony Group. Aw, mm -hmm. that's nice. And then uh, probably eat beforehand because AMC Theaters charges up the wazoo. Seriously, seven and a half dollars for a small bucket of popcorn—that is ridiculous. <laughs> Actually, that's true, because the Lego Ninjago movie, they gave a 57%, a uh, 51%, and that did a decent $11.7 million, $11 million opening, and was actually still a pretty funny kids movie. So, I mean, when, when you really look at it, um, it seems to be there's a lot of dissent. The, the, there has never been a really good consensus between critics and fans of movies like okay right now even though the for mlp the movie the tomato meter is still sitting at 57 percent but the audience score is at a very high 91 percent with an average rating of 4.5 out of 5 and that has over 2,000 and actually it's still going up so i'm pretty sure it's going to breach 3,000 uh very soon um reviews and sure that can be from people just coming in to say they like it but there's a lot of people that have that i mean uh, let's take a look at The Mountain Between Us. I mean, that just recently opened up, and that sucker, um, critics and uh, people are actually pretty much right on the money out. They're both halfway in the middle about liking it or not, and that one has over 7,000 reviews. So when it comes down to it, uh, the critics don't always align with what people like. Because keep in mind, I mean, th these are people that see movies constantly, and so... Sometimes they just get too jaded about it. So, I don't know. What, what do you What do you think? What? <clears throat> yeah. What do you, What do you think, Angel? Or okay. <laughs> Time. What name are you going by here again, man? Star. Star. Okay. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. I don't know. What do you think, Star? Well, my opinion. I. I can't wait for it. I mean, I've seen way too much spoilers, and um, the quality of the movie is great. And uh, the, I think of all one thing that attracted me the most was the soundtrack. I mean, I own the the movie or soundtrack, and uh, of all the tracks that they shown, it was actually great.
I think. <laughs> well, I did remember that it was it a Twitter question that someone asked was like, is there anything happen, you know, like a feature movie or something? Well, okay. Well, I do must uh do want to uh what you call it interrupt. It's the fact that I did hear some people who actually re- who are uh, bronies who watch this. They did say that the pacing was a bit rush kind of thing, and and the thing they did say that it was a bit marketed a bit too much over like a bit too toyetic or something like that. Um, I will say a, a, a review. I I mean I trust more than I do trust the critics of Rotten Tomatoes. Um, friendly with Brad Jones, also known as a cinema snob. Yeah, mm-hmm. he reviewed um did one of his classic um midnight reviews where he just literally w- watches movies with someone else uh at midnight and then reviews them in a car. Yeah, he watched it and his review is already out on YouTube. And he said, I mean, this shows he basically him and his friend came up with the. I mean, his friend gave it uh, more positivity, but it basically comes down to um, it's not his type of movie, but it's a average, average to above average, basically, is what I got from what he was saying. It's um, and he was right uh, from, well, at least his critique. It seems to be a lot like the original My Little Pony, the movie, where it has one, a lot of star power behind it, uh, two, has a lot of songs that seem to come out of nowhere. Uh, three, uh, the story seems to be at a, uh, rushed ra- uh, pace of, um, the ponies lose something because of the big bad and they have to travel all across and meet these other characters in order to find the one characters that can actually solve the problem. To which I, you know, I can see that as a you know, legitimate criticism. I'm like, okay, just from the previews I've seen and from the basic concept I can get from the movie. Yeah. I can see that as a legitimate criticism. Um, so, so really when it comes down to, it comes down to, do you like the characters? Do you like the jokes? Do you like the music? And do you like the aesthetic? So it really comes down to a personal taste sort of movie itself. So, but I, I, I reserve the right to, uh, come back and say to past me, no, well, you were completely wrong. This movie was great. How dare you say any criticisms? I slap you. And that I kind of wonder how I survived slapping my past self without causing the same matter in the same place and pulling a time cop and imploding upon myself. <laughs> Grandfather paradox. <laughs> and paradox. Not, not everyone though. <laughs> not everyone. Not everyone, because uh, Twilight Genesis will not be able to watch it until next month. <laughs> hey, there's a there's a Blu-ray of it leaked somewhere. I'm sure we can show it to Twilight. <laughs> 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 no. Oh come on, we're not gonna talk about all the leaks. The leaks. Nope. Trip, trip, trip. No. <laughs> mm. 
U.S. dollar. Hmm. Well, I don't have time to run to build a bear, and I've already bought my ticket, so oh well. Uh, well, it's one thing. A thing uh, Norman kind of forget. I think it's from the look of the poster. It's uh, only available in the store. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But apparently, online you can still get the promotion for two for thirty five. But for uh, regarding this mystery, I what do you call it mystery gift and uh, poster. I'm not too sure because um, I have all the ponies. <laughs> So I'm not gonna get it. I'm not. I'm not gonna get for it yet. About twenty seven, twenty eight. Close to half half price, yeah. I don't yeah, know, man. Get the, last him. Time I, the last time I went to go build a bear, I mean, I said I got this really beefy guy who had a bunch of body hair, and you know, he kind of was like rubbing <laughs> all over me. It was very awkward. <laughs> but well I did want to add in the fact that uh, well try to get them as soon as possible because we still have Tempest and Songbird Serenade and then it's gonna be with the usual uh, Pure Bear system it's gonna cycle out like a few months later or something like that or once the stock is finished and expect to wait like a long time and they did the uh, and they also did a bit of a short interview on the red carpet at New York uh, during the MLP premiere. <laughs> yep. And I did see, yeah, I see the video. There was a, who was involved again? I think Tara Strong, Liv Schreiber, uh, who else? Uh, K- the one who did the voice, yeah, the one who did Grubber. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. Yep. So they, they took some photos with <laughs> With them, <laughs> yep. I wonder uh, what will be on the DVD. Special features include subtitles and dual audio channels. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, personally, I love commentary tracks. Um, Preferably two different types. One for cast uh the voice actors and a separate one for the uh production crew yeah yeah usually because you know production crew is going to talk about you know behind the scenes stuff and cast is going to talk about the characters and whatnot and usually they're they're, they usually go funnier (laughs) heck i'm trying to remember what one it was but basically like oh it was futurama i think uh no Okay, I I forget what show it was, but I just remember that it had four of the voice actors in it, and they spent the entire episode basically riffing it. I, I'm pretty pretty sure it was um pretty sure it was Futurama. Now, it basically, had John DiMaggio, you know, as Bender interrupting everybody else and just like you know being a sassy black robot. <laughs> But yeah, um, uh, I love commentary tracks. That, that's what I like. Um, also storyboard 
pieces, you know, sh- showing the process from storyboard to the line art and whatnot. But because it's a kids movie, who, who knows? Um, heck, um, I don't know, because it's 2D animated, I don't think they'll have much of a blooper reel, you know, like a fake blooper reel and whatnot. I do have to say, uh, the funniest blooper reel I've ever seen in animation was the original Shrek's blooper reel, just showing all the graphical errors of early 3D rendering. Well, wasn't it there was an episode they released the making of My Little Pony the movie? Don't they? Don't those count? Mm. For, for my case is that I, yeah, I'll, for my case is that I would love to see director's cut. I mean, of uh, everything's all uh, the behind the scenes, all these things, those. Those are great. But one thing I do want to see was director's cut because from what I've seen, the, that, <laughs> I don't want to say it. Apparently there was a bit of a cut off from the intro and all this. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> the one that I mentioned, before, yeah, yeah, there was a bit of a cut off. So I was like, oh, okay. So this scene wasn't in the movie anymore. I was like, oh, that's sad, but it's, it's interesting. <laughs> Hmm. I did like the uh, you know, when they released um, which one was it? The third one, the Friendship Games of Equestria Girls. They showed the storyboards slash the vocals for the original plan of that big musical number. More that's out there. Yes, yeah, that was uh, pretty cool to see that. Yeah, they decided to, they decided to not go with the, uh, sunset wanting to go back to Equestria, which is a perfectly wasted idea! I wouldn't know. I don't have Netflix right now. Hmm. Ah, situation. Well, okay, maybe they'll fix that. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> All, all I do know is um, I, I, I probably wouldn't have paid attention to it because all anyone wants to talk about on Netflix right now is Stranger Things coming out. <laughs> yeah, that too. Oh, Death Note, that is a peach. Oh. Oh. Excuse me, while I call uh, this light to be an absolute coward and freaking hilarious. <laughs> Sorry, I, I can't. I can't reach the false set of screaming of, of a girl that this guy hits. I'm a baritone. I have my limits.
Yeah, so we get to see... I think probably the third one is probably the best, just because we get to see Sunset is a pony again, and we get to see some very hilarious, um, oh, right, I have magic, and I don't have hands interaction. <laughs> uh, so, so, but Starlight just runs to it like, you know, a fish out of water. Uh, not a fish out of water. Like a fish to water. I mean, just the just the whole... No, I'm fine. I got this. Flick of the hair. Gets down on all fours and goes walking. He's like, no, 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 not, not, not like that. No, no, no. It is? Oh, jeez. Shows how much I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, um, a nice little... Uh, if you guys follow Kevin Conroy on Twitter, he has a lovely picture of him hanging out with his good friend, Mark Hamill. And they just look like, look like the bestiest buddy bunch of all. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, okay. So, okay, that's where the tweet's from. That's from the Comic-Con going on. Hmm, I wonder, if the, I wonder what are the surprises and treasures we will find out from this convention going on. <laughs> Ooh, exclusive merch. Well, I've started a new job, and it's um, a little demanding, but uh, definitely one I think I could get used to. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it is, uh, again, it's a temp to higher position, so I'd rather not go too much into it. But basically, it's office work. It's office work for a manufacturer. I make sure that... When orders come in, we get the right orders and the right blueprints out to the manufacturers out in the warehouse so they can start making it and so that shipping can uh, send it when it gets ready. And, yeah, because they desperately need people in the office. Technically, they have enough space in there for nine people. They only had three when I arrived. Yes. I, I've only worked two days, so I don't know if, like, they had a bunch of people leave or if they... Or, or what, but, uh, I mean, so far, I mean, it's been a very amicable, a very amicable and very hospitable, uh, uh, environment. Yes. Very nice people. <clears throat> 
gosh, I'm sounding, I'm sounding, I'm sounding like Donald Trump now. They are very nice, very lovely people. Yes. I know some wonderful people there. Hey, he doesn't have a monopoly on making fun of politics. Starbound? I haven't touched Starbound in ages. Um, what I have played is a bit of Stardew Valley again and Overwatch, nice. but um, mostly what I've been playing in my time off has been Baldur's Gate 2 basically running through an old-school RPG, an actual RPG, one that had questions, and, heck, you can actually skip a good chunk of the game just by choosing something differently. I mean, gosh dang it, this game had choice. And when it means choice, it means actual choice, not a, hey, what color of explosions in the ending cutscene do you want to have? But, uh, no, I have to say... uh what I'm really looking forward to is the Overwatch Halloween event, which actually should be active about the time this episode comes out. Uh, the 10th, right? And for those of you who actually play Overwatch, you know about their... Uh, this will actually be the second time they've done a, done a Halloween event, and it seems like um, because they have timed events with which will there will be timed skins and timed sprays and timed voice lines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They've, uh, there's been a few leaks, because everything leaks nowadays, of uh, some of the skins. And uh, McCree, the gunslinger dude, is going to be having one of Van Helsing. Reaper, the edgelord of the group, is obviously getting another spooky, scary one with another skull mask. And... Um, by far, uh, two of the coolest ones is Zenyatta, the peaceful monk, gets a, Ch a Cthulhu-inspired um, outfit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Symmetra, the part one I character I love, gets this awesome dragon-looking skin. Yeah. And apparently they may be doing some special event, you know, game mode with it. But other than that, um, that is what I've been doing with my week is playing games and doing my new job and writing. So. Uh, my week has been uh, involving a lot of just reading on tech news and stuff. Uh, part, partly just I got a bit in, into cryptocurrency. So just been looking around through the different kinds of currency and the ones that I've been mining like Ethereum, which is quite a bit unique in terms of how it's being used uh, in the everyday situation. Partly is like they say that, or do you call it, they could uh, be used in, in terms of like uh, what kind of a bit of a crop fun kind of situations where they could be used as a mm, how to say <laughs> like they could be used as not just for gamblings and all this thing and there's even like the kind of currency that is for uh, storage kind which you can like invest into the uh, the currency and they <laughs> And you can use it in terms of uh, storage and kind of stuff. Uh, it's it's quite detailed, and I won't go into that. Another thing is that I also got into uh, like into the spoiler chat and just looking around what people's uh, comments about this movie and all these kind of things. Uh, I've been spoiled since way back in April when I went to Typonicon. What do you think? <laughs> It doesn't matter. And, uh, well, I have to wait until the 12th provider if my place here has it. Well, luckily there is one cinema, but I have to travel at least an hour away. So, that's fun. Yes, that's what I have to do. I have to pull some people and hoping there will be enough people at the cinema to watch, but, then again, the 12th is not a good day because it's gonna be Thursday. So, as you all know, Thursday is a work, uh, it's a working day and Thursday and Friday. And Friday is like 
well, in our country, it's it's a working day, so not fun. But I do know there will be a lot of people. Yeah, I do know that there will be some more people watching on the Saturday or Sunday. Well, I do hope there's another place that I could watch. So I could just go to the capital, just watch the movie. After that, then maybe Saturday, Sunday, if the state of Malaysia where I have, I could just go down there and just watch the movie again. Yep. Well, provided they, they have it, that is. Well, oh, sorry. Well, they are kind of terrible. Oh yeah, we did. I did forget to add on by the fact that Malaysia is the only country I think I can officially say that we do not have any advertisement for the movie. Very very sad <laughs> because Thailand, well Thailand has uh, like three or four merch like movie merchandise. Like they have the what you call it, the very nice looking movie. Well, yeah, of course they have Thailand. The... Of course, Thailand gets the good merchandise. That's where it's made. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not really. I don't think so. What? If you can't I... afford China, you you go to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you if you want even more affordable, go Vietnam. Because the currency power is so small that they have they accept U.S. currency, it's that bad. But in but in that case, they have a lot of merch, and then after that, there is uh, and they also have early screening. And lucky, well, uh, because Bangkok Bronies, they have their own connection with the Hasbro Thailand, so they even managed to interview with the CEO of Hasbro Thailand, and then. <laughs> uh, what did he say? I do, not, I do not have no, I have no idea why. But they did say that for some reason they they said that they do not want to spoil the image that they just want to show it as a kids movie. But... <laughs> You can find me at the farthest reaches of your mind, waiting in the corners and the recesses of your consciousness, lurking, preparing. And if you actually want to find me, and it doesn't involve some metaphysical nonsense, you can find me on Twitter at Willison at Twitter, or you can find my writings for Fim Fiction at Fim Fiction Willison, or you can find my artwork on DeviantArt, also for Willison. People can find me on my DeviantArt, AngelicorXX, or my Twitter, which is also the same, AngelicorXX. So, and you will find me posting some stuff. Well, commenting on other people's pictures.
I have been Will Eisen. And this is Slashery. See ya. Toodaloo, folks.